Good day YouTube. This is just another quick comparison video between Windows 11, so on the left there, latest release, versus Windows FX 11 on the right, otherwise known as being Linux based. So they are very different under the hood, but on the front end, they do look pretty similar there. Now, I'll assume you don't have much of an understanding of Linux uh, with this video and you're more coming from a Windows perspective. But uh, so first of all, how this is done is through the use of effectively a, a very popular Linux distribution or operating system called Ubuntu. So that's the back end there, but really the magic for Linux here is the front end. So it's uh, the, the desktop environment, of which this one is called the KDE Plasma desktop environment, which is highly customizable. It can be made to look like anything, Mac, Windows, you name it, it's got it. But the good thing about Windows FX 11 is unlike its uh, real Windows 11 counterpart, it is actually free. It can be used every day. It's not just arguably, but absolutely more secure because it's not, it doesn't have a large attack vector like any Windows, like an executable environment for hackers, that sort of thing. So this could actually be an ideal setup for maybe a, uh, a grandparent or something like that. Uh, now there is, uh, be careful because sometimes there is subscription versions of it. Uh, but um, yeah, that will get into more of that maybe in another video or message me or, or comment to me. But um, yeah, so yeah, certainly uh, uh, likely a very feasible alternative uh, for a parent, a grandparent, something that's safe to use online. Now, I've added a lot of extra icons in the fake Windows version. I'm not sure if I should call it Linux or fake Windows. I'll use them interchangeably. Now, this is no trick here. So Microsoft Edge in fake Linux is the same. It is actually a real Microsoft Edge. It's just not, it's not a copycat. It's not an open source program. Microsoft has allowed some of their applications to indeed go on Linux now. So that's great. Next up is Teams. So you might have heard of Microsoft Teams. There we go. This is the real legit Microsoft Teams that you can also get on obviously real Windows there. I use this at work all the time. That is really, really cool. That That's fantastic. If we go down the list, it's, it's got a real genuine from Microsoft copy of uh, Skype. Microsoft Skype there as well. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You can see Microsoft Word. Uh, there's actually other Microsoft applications here, uh, like Excel. But you'll see in brackets, it's the online version, which could be good enough. It's good to see that you've got that capability, so you're not completely without it. Uh, but it doesn't allow you to install as yet a, uh, I guess, a Linux version application or installer uh, file for it yet. But uh, yeah, still got all those capabilities, provided that you're okay with the using it on the cloud, so to speak, there. You can also see it's got this Microsoft PowerShell. Now, I don't know a great deal about PowerShell on the real uh, Windows, but uh, I know it's command of sorts. Here we go, Windows PowerShell. Now, what I've done is uh, it may have some similarities to the real one. It's just a faked one there. But, oh, here we go, copyright. Ah, so I've actually just before run a, uh, a Linux command on here, right? Just a simple update the operating system. Uh, oh, you know what? I might have typed that in wrong. But anyway, any command that I used before, actually, there we go, it did, it does work. But now that I see all this copyright, Microsoft, all rights reserved stuff on both of them, I do wonder if it's the real thing. Maybe aka.ms uh, probably tells us. So it seems to run both Linux and Windows commands. Don't quote me on that. Uh, it's it's not only power users use this. I don't use it really much at all. I guess it's good for servers and things, but so is Linux. I mean, this fake Windows copy has all the power of Linux in the background. So great for web servers and all things of that nature there too. It's even got Telegram desktop, as we can see here, Spotify, which is a, a real, uh, it's not a web version, it's a real version from Spotify. So that's pretty cool to see there as well. Now, uh, talking about the similarities a lot, uh, maybe we should talk about the differences there at a moment. Oh, it's asking me to uh, allow that update. I may as well do the update as the video is going. Why not? Now, actually, before I go into some stuff visually, they're both appealing. They look quite similar. Not exactly the same, but uh, the icon sets in some ways are exactly the same. That's pretty cool. Oh, I should go to now the software. Uh, what would you call it now? We had it there on Windows a moment ago. The, the Microsoft Store and on the, the Linux side, the 
just the, I guess, the Linux store, or the Windows FX 11 store. Uh, these are very different. Now, very different side of things. Oh, and that aborted, so I'm gonna have to load that up again in just a hot second. In fact, I should probably really only do one thing at a time. Having two systems open at once is quite the big deal there. But uh, you might know the uh, the Microsoft Store. You can download games, videos, all sorts of things. To be honest, the Microsoft FX is a little bit more simplified. I mean, you can get all those things, all those apps that I've just showed you. You can get web browsers, which is the main thing. You can even get the Chrome web browser. They call it Chromium. Uh, you can get the uh, Firefox browser. Uh, all sorts of things there. But uh, yeah, just, just uh, I mean, you're not going to be able to play games or a lot of proprietary apps on uh, fake Windows or Windows FX 11 or Linux here. So it's getting more and more supported every day, every month, every year. Absolutely, it's come a long way in 10 years. I mean, we have, we have a, a, a Skype and yeah, Teams and browsers, all sorts of things. So, you know, kudos to it, that's fantastic. But yeah, you do have limitations. So if you just uh, say, uh, want to download a very specific specific piece of software from the internet that only runs on Windows or Mac most of the time It's not going to run on Linux. There is hacks to get around that for but for your novice user It's very hard to get it working now speaking of open source uh, Alternatives, I mean apart from these online uh, Outlooks and things you do have the the open source Kmail and all those sorts of things They look quite beautiful quite easy to use quite good and they're, they're really well supported, so you're getting updates all the time. They, they're just updated all the time. Whereas Windows is uh, more of a, let's say, a more fully matured system. Uh, the downside to that, in a way, is Microsoft team seem to sit on bugs for, for months or, or updates to the visual uh, enhancements that they really need to do for, for a long time there. Uh, you get in security updates almost every second or third day that automatically can come through uh, fake w win fake windows. Uh, the real windows side of things, they, they, they come at certain times. It is or it can be scheduled and it just takes so long to download them. And then you've got to install them, then you've got to restart. Now Linux is generally quite the opposite. Very, very few times you have to restart after doing an update. Unless it's a very specific kernel update or something like that. But uh, let's have a look at the, the folders. I've been harping on for way too long. So let's just see if this is uh, the same, similar, or different. Uh, here we go, so very, very similar. It's really good to see there. So let's just go to maybe, uh, is there a, a My Computer? Well, you've got trash, you've got documents. In fact, it's not the same, but it is similar as you can see. Uh, maybe a novice wouldn't notice the difference. So the exact same icon sets, which is really cool. Let's call it iconography. That's really good. Uh, we've got the, we, we do have a C drive. It doesn't work like a C drive in, uh, in Linux. It looks more like a, just a drive of sorts. Uh, in fact, if I go to home, then I go up and then I go up. Uh, yeah, there's all the files. That's the root drive instead there. But uh, much of a muchness there, so that's good to see. And uh, let's say we have a look at the uh, the usage. So I don't want to open up two, maybe two things at a time. I'll just jump across to the task manager on Windows 11 and see how much RAM is used on boot up. So about 1.7 gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty standard for Windows. Let's jump across to the uh, the same basic uh, the system monitor. Here we go for uh, fake Windows and oh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, actually looks quite nice. Looks a lot better than most Linuxes. So they've really outdone themselves. They've made it quite clean, clear, beautiful. We have one gigabyte of, of RAM on boot up. So certainly not quite half, but almost half uh, because it is Linux. It's got a lot of less pre-loaded applications and things that it will never need. CPUs were both idling out there. It tells you about the disk, disk space <laughs> and all sorts of things there. So that's really good to see. Uh, let's see, so we've got the front end that uh, it could fool a lot of people. Not exactly the same, but with some of the same apps. The main thing is you can web browse, you can check your e emails, you can watch YouTube videos, whatever the case may be on either of these machines. You can't play games on fake Windows. I mean, you can't play as many games, uh, probably only maybe 5%. So do not expect it to, to be a game machine whatsoever, unless it's a web-based game, which is uh, like a web browser. And that would be the only difference there. Uh, let's see, uh, so use a bit less RAM, it's, it's a lot more secure, the, the Linux variety. Uh, Windows c can just never be as secure, just because it's so popular, it's, it's such a larger attack vector. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. But um, I think I might leave it there for now, guys. So thanks for watching.
please leave a comment, subscribe, hit that like button, and I do hope to see all of you guys there in the next one. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I'd love to do a follow-up video about any of these guys here. Thanks again. Ciao.